The current law for selling cars requires that you go through the, the big existing franchise dealer networks. Uh, unfortunately, we, we have an electric car that's different, requires to, to want to educate people about what an electric car is about. And, uh, and, and, and the existing car dealers that, that sell lots of gasoline cars um, have a conflict of interest relative to selling the virtues of an electric car. So it's just really hard for them to, 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 to sell electric cars without counterselling what is the mainstay of their business. So what we're saying is like, look, for startup electric cars, car companies, so if there's, an, if, there's, if there's a new electric car company, not just Tesla, it could be any, anyone, um, then they should be allowed to sell direct because that's the only way for us to make our case in an unconflicted way to the consumer. If we don't succeed this session, we'll come back again. Um, but of course, uh, the legislature in Texas only meets every two years, so um, it would at least be two years from now. Um, and um, what I'm told by some is that it, it, it takes uh, up to three legislative sessions when it's something controversial. You know, Texas is a, is, a, is, a, is a free enterprise state that prides itself on bring, being the freest in the nation. I think it's a good thing. Um, and the laws that are in place uh, to, to protect the big established auto dealer groups um, are very un-Texas. Our total sales I mean, would be maybe 0.1% of all new cars sold in Texas. Um, because there's, there's like 1.3 million new cars sold in Texas every year. We're talking about maybe 1,500. Um, so we're, it's not like this is taking money, you know, from, you know, food from the mouths of auto dealers. This is like a, just a, a crumb. Um, so I think, you'd think that they'd, they'd be willing to compromise, but we've tried every possible compromise. And, and, and they've, they've just said, no, 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 nothing. It was, it's like Dr. Seuss, green eggs and ham. Like they, they won't do it in a house, they won't do it in a mouse. I think maybe they think that if, if there's an electric vehicle exemption, somehow that um, opens up, it somehow makes them vulnerable, their franchise is vulnerable, you know, with respect to Ford or GM or anything. But this, we, we tried hard to craft this bill um, in, in a way so that it only applies to startup electric vehicle companies to be as unthreatening as possible. I think it's true. In, in almost every arena, and unfortunately, is not true in in the car, in, with respect to car sales, um, and and I think um, as soon as Texans realize that, they'll be like, hey, what the heck? We need to change this law. This is very un-Texan. When they had the House hearing yesterday, um, the, I mean, there, there were five people that showed up to testify for the Auto Dealer Association, they were all employed by the Auto Dealer Association. There were 47 people that testified in favor of Tesla. Two of them were employed by Tesla. I don't even know, who, I don't even actually know who all came. I'm not joining to come lately to Texas, because uh, so we're, uh, my, my, on the space side, we've been uh, operating in Texas for now over 10 years. Uh, we've, uh, have our main uh, rock development facility in Central Texas near Waco. Um, and uh, the, the people of uh, McGregor and Waco and General Area have been incredibly supportive. Um, and um, I mean, that's part of why I was like, yeah, it's, it's really great doing business in Texas. And they're, they're like, what, when, when we do sort of big, exciting things, they're like, they're, they're cheering us on and it's, um, it's good. Um, and uh, so, so when it came time to think about, okay, where are we going to put the the world's first commercial auto orbital launch site, um, me and the rest of the team were like, hey, we should do it in Texas. We've had such a good experience.